Now, camera being camera, I will warn you, the camera is recording, but I won't point it at the audience. Okay? So, any of your three and four letter acronym agency people can just uh, rest easy. Um, I am audio recording tonight. I'll splice it together as I normally do and upload it to not only our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, but I'll share it around how I normally do. So for those who haven't had the uh, misfortune of meeting me before, my name is Wade, VK1MIC. A couple of weeks ago I gave a presentation on Raspberry Pis in the shack. It was a lot of information, quite, um, had to move through quite fast. But tonight, um, you, uh, use, using the model of flexible and adaptable, which is the uh, sort of uh, go, go light, go fast equivalent of, for SOTA, we sort of um, tend to uh, do quite well. And uh, I've managed to put, this might come as a shock to a few people at a radio club, an actual antenna up tonight. So there's, um, there's a ZS6BKW currently erected outside in our grass back area, and I've managed despite my running around, managed to actually get it connected to a radio tonight. So uh, a little bit later in the evening, I'll actually, we'll actually have a QSO with um, Peter, VK3YE, uh, who's down in Melbourne, uh, waiting like a coiled spring uh, to respond to our CQ. So tonight I'm gonna run over quickly the portable side of my Raspberry Pi setup, which is spread out um, on the table over there and I'll, I'll um, stay around later and actually point to things if anyone has any particular questions. But the other thing I wanted to cover tonight is actually a bit of a look at uh, JS8. So um, the things I'm going to cover off to uh, JS8 is a, a, a semi-new digital mode. It came out only a month after FT8. Uh, so the Raspberry Pi, which we've talked about before, is a very small computer. Uh, it doesn't have a super, super amount of power. It's actually very, very small. They call it the um, cigarette packet size computer, etc. So that's the white and red device that's currently as part of our, um, that, that runs the center of the digital station. It'll run WSJTX, so Whisper, FT8, J JT65, things like that. So all the JT modes. It'll also run um, uh, FL Digi, so that's your PSK31, your, your Weatherfax decoding, your uh, Hellscriber, if uh, and other obscure modes that tickle your fancy around that. Uh, and much to the chagrin of some people, it also does great CW keyboard work. So. Uh, I, I was lucky enough to work Gerard VK2IO during his surprise sneak attack of Uluru before it um, uh, on a summit from CW. So I managed to work him while I was at work, remoting into my radio and computer at home, to having a he, he was on CW and I was on the keyboard, and um, that was a logged contact. The keyboard mode of JS8. So we'll, I'll cover that in a bit more detail, but essentially it's running to. FT8 level, so if anyone has never heard of FT8, never used FT8, FT8 transmits in 15 second windows, listens for 15, transmits for 15, listens for 15, and I think it's only about 77 um, bytes. Yeah, uh, good, thank you, thank you. I was, I was gonna say, we're passing about my thimble full of information, that's uh, lapping around the ankles. Um, uh, so it's very small amounts of information. And as I said, we'll do a live demo. I'm set up on 80 meters. Uh, normally it's an anathema to me, but I actually have the amp plugged in tonight. So we'll run about 40 watts just so I can absolutely make a contact with Peter on 80 meters down to Melbourne. Oh, not yet. Can't have you playing games yet. So um, the other things, that the Raspberry Pi will run is Direwolf. So uh, think 1200 board packet, 300 board packet, 9600 board packet. It runs it as a sound modem. It doesn't require a TNC. It's a software TNC. Um, so if anyone has uh, seen VK1 MIC-1 on APRS, that's run entirely through Direwolf and a Raspberry Pi at home. 
I was so obsessed, but it was actually my very first gateway into amateur radio, and that was email over HF uh, under the Windlink uh, banner. I use PAT, which is a Linux program, and I regularly connect to a VK3 station down in Mildura. They are my regular gateway on 80 metres, and every time I hit them, I'm sending and receiving at the blistering speeds of 300 board or something similar. Um, for some of the time-dependent modes, such as FT8, JS8, and um, some of the, J, the other JT modes, time is incredibly important on your computer. So you're often told that you need to sync the time or your time's out of sync. It affects your decodes, uh, sorry, it affects your ability to decode transmissions, but it also affects the ability for other people to decode your transmissions. So the Raspberry Pi, through uh, beg, borrow, steal and bribery, I've managed to get some, uh, some, uh, some of the online guides to work. And when it's connected to the real internet, it grabs time from the, um, the online uh, time um, synchronization systems, as well as if you see the green flashing light throughout the night, that's actually connected to GPS. So it does time sync via GPS as well. And because we don't have Wi-Fi here at the, um, at the club, I, it, it, it is set up at this very moment as if I was on a summit. So it creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. So it, it is constantly checking every minute, can I see Wade's phone's hotspot, which I don't have turned on tonight? Can I see Wade's home Wi-Fi that I know? If any of the, if that answer is no, which allows me to remote in and, as you'll see, drive it, which we'll do tonight. So that's um, the portable Pi. I, oh, I call it the portable Pi, as in the collective setup of an 817, the Raspberry Pi, an audio interface, which also triggers PTT. Yeah, between those three things, I can do all those modes that I mentioned before. And fairly lightweight. Like, we're talking a large Tupperware container. The 817's the hardest thing to pack. So, digital modes. You know, uh, uh, we had Morse come out in 1890. Then we had Ritty in 1922. Uh, AX25 in 78. PSK31 in 98. JD65 in 2003. And then FT8 come out in June 2017. And then really quickly after that, hey. Um, so Jordan, who is the head programmer who actually created, designed JS8, brought it out within a month. It's actually built on the skeleton of uh, WSJTX um, that does all the FT8 decodes. Am I talking utter shite? Does anyone not understand something I've said tonight? Please tell me at any time, because I understand that different people have different interests, and if I'm going from an assumed base of knowledge that you don't have, Please tell me. Now, here's the fun bit. Shall we play a game? I'm going to play a series of audio clips of digital modes. And I want you to have a bit of a guess of what they are. It's a reminder that all of our digital modes come as audio formats. Ready? Yep. Yeah. So it's built on FSK, it's PSK 31 that one was. This one's a little bit lighter, but if you've tuned in them about 7074 recently, no? Sorry? No, not FT4. That's slightly, that's on 7080. Yep. It is FT8. Look at that. Go, Rebecca. Kicking ass and taking names. And one more, one more just because I like to be tricky. Sona. Sona. <laughs> Daleks? No? That's Hellscriber. I just wanted to throw it in there. I've never actually heard it on the air. I just wanted to throw that one in there. Um, cool. So, 
I put them in there because I wanted people to sort of remember where we've come. It's all well and good to put a list of dates, but as we heard, Ritty sounds one way, then we move on to the frequency shift keying of, uh, through PSK and up into FT8 and on to JS8. JS8 actually sounds the same, but doesn't do the 15 second sleep cycles after it sends 15 seconds, and I'll explain why very shortly. So JS8 is the mode, and JS8 Call is the app that Jordan designed. And um, there's the little logo for it up there in the corner. It's built upon the FT8 Wheat Signal Foundation, but it's for those who actually want to do something other than sending call sign, grid square, signal report, confirm those three things, log the call. Or confirm receipt, RR73, thanks for playing. Okay, so that, if anyone's never done FT8, that constitutes a logged contact. Job done. So FT8 uses the 15 second transmit cycle, the 15 second RX cycle, but JS8 keeps sending through those 15 second windows if it has more to send. Hey Graham, how are you tonight is more than one 15 second cycle. It does not care about odds and evens. It cares about when the start of the 15 second cycle is, so if you're within two seconds of that, but it does not, it'll just keep stitching and sometimes I like to give people the um, irrits by sending, shall we say, a 10 over package, so a one minute 50 transmission packet. And there's a little symbol that appears at the end of the text that tells you that Wade has stopped sending and you can now reply. Some of the other things it does, like FT8, it reports to PSK Reporter, so you can see where you're heard, you can see who else is online. But one of the things that Jordan has been super smart in doing is actually building a software uh, eye gate in, 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 into the program. So any station, okay, rewind. In Australia, 30 metre packet, HF, APRS is pretty much the standard for HF, APRS. There are some of us who play on 40 metres, so Gerard runs a eye gate, a VK7 HSE down in Tasmania runs an eye gate, and there's a couple of mobiles running around, which means that us dirty standards can actually use um, uh, HF positioning uh, if we need to. There's not many of them. However, through JS8, any station that hears you is connected to the internet and has the little feed box ticked is an eye gate. And you can send an automated command to it and it'll appear on APRS internet. So if, uh, APRS.fi. He's also made it so that APIs, so a computer, a, a, a string of code can actually be connected to um, JS8 call and do automated things. One of those things were, well, clearly I don't have one set up tonight, but I manually went in and set up that we are at X uh, grid location tonight, a six, um, the, the, the six character grid location. I could set an API to go, is there a GPS connected? Yes. What's our lat long? Got that. Convert that to a maidenhead grid locator, insert that into the correct field, automating that process. So if you think about it, with two APIs, you can go, give me my location and send it out every five minutes. There's mobile HF APRS on 80, oh, 160 through to 23 centimetres because there's frequencies assigned for JS8 for all of those. And as long as someone hears you and is connected to the internet, home and host. Now, uh, as Jordan said, he understands that JS8 call, the, at the software, which I'll pull up tonight, stands on the shoulders of giants because the takeoff is better. Now, because some people like to read versus listen to me rub it on. I even printed out handouts. How about that? So if you'd like to take one, pass it on. Just has a bit more of the in-depth information, particularly on the technical side. So how does it work? As I said, it sends in the same 15 second um, uh, overs that FT8 does. Uh, however, it just keeps sending and stitches the message back together at the other end, the receiving end. You can send directed commands to the other station and that creates an automatic response from the software. So often I'll leave JS8 call on if I'm at work 
and I'll leave it on throughout the day. And it sends out uh, what, I what in the software is referred to as a heartbeat. For want of a better description, it's very similar to whisper. It sends out one over and people respond to you if they can hear you, which I can see on the other screen. There's about five stations, including VK5, that can hear us right now. I can automatically ask Peter's machine what my signal report is without him having to type it. I can ask it and it'll bounce back to me. I can uh, send out my grid square, as I said, which puts it on APRS. Now it's also built into the software a store and forward system, asynchronous. So that it's not just I send it to Graham, Graham uh, a message for Andrew, Andrew I can't hear directly, and whether he's online or not, Graham's just going to hold it for me. And next time Andrew sends out a heartbeat on the network, the RF network, saying, I'm here, Graham goes, oh, while you're here, I've got a message for you from Wade, sends it through. In this example, um, uh, Jordan had relayed a message to JY1, which I believe is the call sign of the King of Jordan, using uh, a number of relays. So, because uh, I can query other stations, who can they hear? Graham, can you hear Andrew? He says, no, okay, who can you hear? Here's the top five stations and, um, Graham can hear in the last hour. And then I can go, who can they hear? And relay it via, and we can just keep doing passing on. Now, I'll pull up the live software in a bit. There's no test, I've just put this in here because it's also in the manual, which is in the bottom of the, um, of, of the document there, the, the link to the manual. It looks very similar to other digital modes. So you're going to get the band activity, you're going to see uh, the, the messages coming in, whether they're for you or not. You've got a nice big waterfall down the bottom here. This is your, your leaderboard, I guess you'd call it, of, uh, of stations heard how long ago and what their signal report was, and also how on or off time they were. And you can set your time without a GPS versus theirs. Mm, uh, much like, say, on FT8, there are recommended frequencies, but as we know in Australia, we're not bound to them. They're a gentleman's agreement. If one's more busy than the other, or as if we've discovered at the moment, FT4 is suddenly coming and clobbering in over the top of the allocated JS8 frequencies, we can just move to another digital section and have a, a, a connected discussion. Obviously, I'd tell you, meet me here, etc. There are the macros. I don't use macros. I prefer it as a keyboard mode. Um, but I think probably that's enough of me rabbiting on. Um, I'll put the link on. Oh, great. That's fantastic contrast. Sorry about that. The, um, the, the, there, there's a YouTube video which is actually a presentation by Jordan, the developer, uh, to his radio club. There's a manual and I know it's, it is an anathema to our very core of our being to actually read a manual for anything. However, questions that you have are actually answered in that manual because it is a live document and if a number of people ask something, because clearly it's not explained well enough. I'm more a kinetic learner. I need to do it to see it. So how about we just open up the actual software and have a look at some of the stations that are sitting there waiting for us right now, he says. Go. Um, so, as I said, my, my Raspberry Pi creates a hotspot. My laptop is connected to that hotspot via remote screen sharing. Just in the time we've been here tonight, we can hear... Oh, so, when I said about messages, on another band, VK4QM has a message for me. He had it 86 days ago. I just forgot to tell him via the remote control so, um, set up to actually clear his message inbox for me. So just ignore that one. But VK3JOX, we heard him 15 minutes ago. He was negative uh, 13 dB and he was on this waterfall at uh, 498 hertz. Uh, VK3MCB, similar. VK3YE, star. That tells me he can, I didn't just hear him, but he can hear me as well. VK4 GRM, also on 80 metres. He's coming in as a plus two. So he's got a decent 80 metre set up for his place of VK4. We've got some activity coming in here. Peter's already acknowledged tonight when I said to everyone, 
I'm about to kick off, I'm going to look for a contact, blah, blah. Pete's already replied and said, good signal, happy to have a chat. So at the moment, I'll send out a heartbeat and we'll see who can hear us and who responds. This is one click. So as I said, it'll send it in the 15 second window, tells me it's transmitting, which is literally my call sign, heartbeat, and my uh, heartbeat being HB, uh, which just tells the network, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, and it can send it in um, uh, increments of any n minute, whatever n minute you wish to have it, either it's, uh, I suggest around 10. But So we've sent out ours, and I'm going to be looking for any activity coming in here very shortly that'll be responses from automatic stations. He says, don't you love a good live demo that possibly doesn't go how you want it to? So do you have a heartbeat transmission on a different... Yeah, so all the heartbeats and responses are generally in the bottom 1,000 hertz. QSOs generally happen above 1,000 up to about 2,000. And we're, we, we can simultaneously decode anything that's happening in here as long as we're not transmitting at the same time. It, the software actually, once it, it, because you've told it to send a heartbeat, it randomises any number within that 1,000. That way, you don't sit on 501 and I sit on 501 and we just sync up for the rest of our lives and never actually know each other's there. And the receiving station is a player no matter what? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, we've actually got, we're actually getting stuff in the bottom portion now. Am I going to make me a liar or are you going to... Decode. So is that VK5? Yep. 500? Is that off the left hand side? Uh, here? In the, in the yellow. In the yellow. Is, is, is he Yeah, he's actually he's acknowledging me, and my signal report uh, was negative 03. But, but did his signal come up, or is the waterfall on the left hand so they're all stations heard. So VK3J, this is actually like a decode. These are to me, so these are my messages. So that's why Pete's saying he can hear me plus four, the five can hear me uh, negative three, uh, etc. But these are what other people are doing. So three um, MCB is talking or is acknowledging three YE on his heartbeat. Three JOX is he also acknowledging three YE. Three YE sending out his heartbeat. So those one are responding to him. So let's see if Pete's there and wants to have a chat. Why what's the frame on the left hand side of the waterfall? The frame here? Yes. Yep, so that is a audio indicator. Uh, by green it's telling me that it's within a uh, it's not overblown. I haven't give the I'm not uh, um, feeding in too much. Uh, the green uh, so you can ignore that, we're not using cat tonight, but it's actually telling me that it's within an acceptable range. So there's a scale from zero to eighty D B there on the side. For one of a, uh, a, a noise indicator, an audio, uh, yeah, yep. So in, a, in two frames, so one slash two, I'm transmitting in, at the end of the next, so, and go. I've just, I've just messaged Peter and asked him if he's ready. And he'll respond. And it's, so, oh, remember how I said before that there's a little indicator at the end of each message sent to tell you that that station has finished? The, on, on mine, because it's customizable, they're just little diamonds. Just the little diamonds means EOM, end of message. So Pete doesn't have to respond on the same frequency I'm sending as long as he has clicked me. So by me clicking Peter here, it actually says here in very hard to read, type your outgoing directed message to VK3YE here. So I don't have to keep saying VK3YE, DE, VK1MIC, the software handles that all in the background, it doesn't waste bits and bytes on that um, in our QSO. So where was Pete on the waterfall? He was down there. Yep, so there's Pete. He's actually responded straight away. Yes, he's ready. 
So it's working that we get where decoding stations, well, the problem is we've put a decent antenna up tonight, so we're actually getting decent signal reports, but it'll decode down into the negative 20s. Um, if you're running the quote unquote suboptimal setup that I'm using at home, I, I can work all of VK and most of ZL on 80, and um, on a good night up where we are in North Canberra, we can easily work um, the US on a good night on 80. Um, So I've just said good evening, uh, Pete. Good evening from Crack. Uh, general meeting. And as I'm typing, this number has gone up. So it went from three, and I was halfway through meeting, and it went up to four, which means I need to send four frames, or four 15 second um, blocks. Now, so unlike, as I said, unlike FT8, which will send, listen, send, listen, send, listen, it says I've got four, and it's going to pump it out at a massive nine words per minute. It's just, whew, it's almost, almost fast enough to pass the old uh, CW uh, entrance exam. Um, so that's, see, there, there we go. We've, we've sent our first frame, or sending our second, and uh, at the end, it's, so, the negative feedback I've had around this mode is it's slow. If you can send to an, if you can communicate with another station in a faster mode, why wouldn't you do that? Use that mode. But we're talking about negative 15, negative 18, negative 20, negative 22, and passing messages, whether they're welfare. So if you'd like to see it used in the field and you're a YouTube person, uh, you've got Survival Tech Nord or Julian, OH8. STN on YouTube. He actually goes out and camps for four and five days and communicates only using this mode with designated stations across the world. Everything from my battery status, my health status, everything like that, all going well. And he can put that via APRS as a location. He can send a directed message. So hopefully Pete will be typing away for us shortly and coming back to us. Um, uh, what are some of the other things that we can do? So, we can do groups. So, much like a, uh, a net, so if you wanted to have a, which Friday nights is generally the JS8 net on 80, you can just send an at and a, uh, an agreed text, in this case it's JS8 VKZL, and anyone that's also listening on that, um, on, on, on that group, on anywhere in the band, uh, in, anywhere in the waterfall there, um, you can get an alert. So if I, if, if, for example, myself, Andrew, and Andrew were also JS8 operators, and we changed our group to VK1 SOTA, I can send out a blast. At, yeah, yep. Basically, it, um, for want of a better word, a tactical call sign group and things like that can also respond, which I think is pretty cool. So Pete's saying, good evening, Wade and everyone. Um, from XVK1PK, he's currently at his QTH in Melbourne running 5 watts QRP. And he's still sending more. Wait, is there any error correction? 100% forward error correction. So my, my one will go back and go, so if I had have got dot 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 and no diamond, that's an indicator we're missing half a message. I can either go reply to re, uh, right click on Pete's call sign and say again or AGN question mark and the computer will just send me everything he sent before. So the computer just computer computer. Yep. Yeah, 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 and goes missing something here, we're missing the last bit, etc. Um, so did did anyone know Pete when he was up here as one PK? Yeah, so Um, on the uh, ZS6BKBKW. Uh, anyone like to pass a message to Pete? GE from uh, everyone here? Yep. He is remembered very well. I like Remembered here. Oh, that's some great typing. Let's, because um, I know Pete's also recording at the other end, so let's not make it too crap from VK1. Um, membered. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, what, how many frames are we up to now? Six. Six. Okay, so we just keep going, and as we're doing it, there's other stuff happening on the band, the other stuff chugging away. People, that just decodes because it knows we don't need it. It's not us, it's just simultaneously decoding. Um, well, I, I, I've basically clicked where I want to be. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, great SIG for your five watts. So that's a seven frame. So we're getting a bit more verbose, shall we say, on than the, uh, the, than the quick 15 second uh, windows that we bang out. So, mm -hmm. So he's not, he's not sending to us? No. Uh, so while we are transmitting, it ignores everybody else. It just goes, yep. But while we're not doing that, it'll simultaneously decode, much like FT8 looking in, in, all across the, the, the window that you're listening, it'll just dump everything. Now, it's a little bit slow. So if someone's running something other than a Raspberry Pi at home, these things decode a little bit faster. On the 817, we're talking maybe seven seconds for a really low down um, uh, negative 22 type audio because it has to use its little brain really, really hard to do some deep decoding because it'll pass it through three times to see what it can get. Um, so you might see, so, so these lines here are 15 second chunks as it moves down in time. You might see a message end here before it starts fully appearing up here because it's trying its little guts out. Um, however, that's acceptable for me in the field. However, and you've heard me tonight sort of be a bit of an evangelical um, uh, advocate for JS8 and portable digital. I've only activated two summits on digital. Why? It takes a little bit of time to set up, maybe 10 minutes. On a good soda day, I've put away 15 contacts in that time and activated well and truly. However, for fun, or if I propped myself up on a nice comfy chair and wanted to work Mount Ainsley and work the world at night, I'd take the digital up and I'll have a crack because I'll work stations that I won't be able to work on phone, obviously. Um, Mount Hotham, when I was down with the VK3 operators, I actually activated Mount Hotham only on 20 metres FT8 and um, more for demonstration purposes than, a, than anything else, a challenge. But uh, equipment wise, as I said, other than the Raspberry Pi and an audio interface, pretty much everything else there would come into the bush with me. There's a mega battery over there tonight because I didn't want to go flat or anything, but um, uh, I, I carry a lighter weight battery. So what Pete was, Pete's also using his 817 on his five watts. And as you can see, with a decent antenna either end, five watts will happily do VK on, eight, on 80 metres, which um, is perfectly workable. Wait, can you um, put the message parts out to a separate messaging program or to uh, a printer? Or like that? So that's where your APKs come in. As Jordan said uh, in, I think, some of the paperwork, if you want to write your own APKs, fill your boots, make sure you share them. It's not, uh, I can actually have a message pop up on the screen, um, as in, so an actual pop up message. Um, uh, so if you wanted like an actual more visual indicator that you've got something, you can set an audio indicator on that on your end so it crows like a, a, a rooster when you get a message, you can do that. It, um, for like an output. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Um, so, no or maybe not yet is probably the correct way to say that. Uh, it, it's not been formally int introduced or used in things like races or Aries in the US. However, people to people, it's used almost every day. So, um, there are 10,000 members of the Groups IO group for JS8, and he own, uh, Jordan only put out the public release earlier this year. So I, I, I might sound a bit funny if I say I'm part of the dev team because I can't program. I'm part of the development team, but I'm more the lowest common denominator tester. I'm the one. If Wade can do it, others can have a crack at it. 
Um, so Pete's just said I'm, uh, I'm negative 10 at his end. He's using his 817 on a G5 RV. So I'll just ask him if we, I can send some automatic things to his station and just get them to respond and I'll show you what they are. Yep, so just like FT8, so we, we had a chat to Peter tonight, so I logged the contact. This button up here says log, and I just hit log. It's, it put on, off, Pete's grig, band, comments, anything like that. Um, and just like WSJTX, you can export it as uh, either live if you use any of the connection, one, any connection setups or as a... ADIF, is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, just as an ADIF, you can just drop and drag. Uh, so I'm just asking Pete if he minds if I use his station for... Now, normally I wouldn't ask, normally I would just do them, but because he's literally sitting at the keyboard talking with us, I just want him to not, not push the computer out of the way, essentially, and reply. But... Um, so while we've been going, 3JOX is having a... Am I reading that right? Is that a VK6? So, yep, there's a VK6 at negative 7. Um, and my, my, my northern uh, call sign, VK4MIC, uh, um, I think... Oh, I can't remember his name for the life of me. He's online as well tonight. Yes. Is the decode function decoding during receipt of the frame or at the end of the frame? At the end of the... Oh, simultaneously, and then you get the diamond if it's all received, or the dot, dot, dot if there's something okay, in So you. when you've got seven frames... Yep. He... Oh, so... Decode frame, yep. next frame... Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, uh, when Pete replies, you'll see some, and then more... And then more. So even if it's only partial, and you can, you know, start your reply. Or so it's doing a frame at a time. A frame at a time. Yeah. So, so if yeah, of the seven, if it missed three, like missed frame three, you'd get decode, decode, dot, 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 decode, 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 decode. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, he's in suburbia. Yeah. Um, what, what's our noise level here? I can't actually see. Oh, oh no, it's receiving. We're getting him in an S9. <laughs> yeah. So I'm surprised he's not running one of his loops or something similar for... <laughs> oh, no, it's and there we go. So, so there we go. There, there's a partial decode. No probs, JS8 call is A, and then waiting for the next frame to decode. As I said, so here's that frame being received. It is a great mode, dash far. So, right. Now is the end of that 15 second frame. Waiting for the decode. Better mode than FT8, exclamation mark. So there's a, because it's such a nice signal, there's not a lot of lag there. It goes, well, because it's send, uh, like FT8, it's not just sending it once. It's sending those same things multiple times. So it's going, oh, I missed it, that one. Oh, I've got that bit, that one, stitching it all together and then giving us the text. It's captured the entire... Yes, so, yeah, yeah. And yep. then it sits down and think about... What Correct. So it gets a little bit slow if there's 10 people having a QSO and it comes through in the same frame because it's going, oh, this is going to be a noisy night. <laughs> so we'll, we'll send some automatic stuff to Pete. So I can just go directed to him. These are all some things I want to do. I can ask him his status, whether he's got, so that'll tell me if he's just in auto mode, like me at work, just leaving it replying automatically. I can query him and say, please acknowledge you can communicate directly with X call sign. I can ask him to, again, as I said, please automatically repeat your last transmission. These are automatic, these are Macros, essentially. QSL, did you receive my last one? All those kind of things. Um, uh, hearing, question mark. So he'll tell me back the most. So let's send him that one. We'll find out who he's hearing. 
Well, I just, so I just sent him hearing. So does it use a kind of table thing for compression with common words? Yes. No, no, it does that, but that's the level of my understanding of it. Because if that's going in one packet, then you put all the words in there. Yep. And those common words must pack down to Yes. Yep. The manual will explain it better other than me agreeing with you, but I know that that sounds familiar. <laughs> so Pete's now automatically responding. Which, so think about this away from your shack. Think about this not being able to just fire up PSK Reporter and see who can hear you, etc. Think about this. God forbid if you were like Tate, who's here tonight, one FTRA, soon to be one something else, hopefully, um, who's about to do a multi-day ultralight hike through the Blue Mountains. Unlike last time, he won't be using another communications mode in the 400 megahertz band to call a helicopter. Uh, um, this time, he'll be taking his 817. But his lovely girlfriend, instead of having to relay through me any messages that she has for his welfare, etc., he could use JS8. He could post his location through HF on any band, any band that's usable. Um, so Pete can hear three JOX, six LMK, five AW, and as I said, my northern cousin, four MIC. All responded automatically, whether Pete was sitting at the keyboard or not. Now I can say, I want to relay a message via Pete. He says, he says, as he tries to find the relay button. Where is it? Where is it? Sorry, a message to, please store this message. Please acknowledge. So where was it, sorry? Yep, that one. MLK Oh, that's not his call sign Six MLK She's all picky tonight. Next time I won't be typing on a on a on a projector, will I? That'll teach me. So I and as we're typing this, Pete's also replying. So Pete's station is going to retransmit yep. yours automatically. Yep. Without him doing it. Yep. Well, he's turned it on and told yeah. it to go into auto. Sorry, I just I know there's gonna be 40 comments on this YouTube video going. Automatic mode. Yeah. Best JS8 contact was to get through to VK. Waiting. Six MLK on a zero call. Jesus. So, and because we haven't got the diamond, we're still waiting. There we go. He just, so Pete just said his best contact is on uh, 0.03 of a watt on 80 metres to that VK6 station. So, I'll reply. Yeah. It's all right. I'll... So, mm. Wait, is there a disagreement on the upper power limit? Nope. Nope. But noting um, 
noting obviously different radios have different tolerances for their duty cycles and you're sending in back to back 100% full, um, full power digital. Um, I personally, at home, don't run more than 30 watts. <laughs> Yeah. So if you were running 400 watts, you basically make your own propagation. Well, but also the issue is it creates an expectation that you're going to be heard at the other, heard in reply. That 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 that's the difficulty. Pete, well, he's running on five. Oh, um, so. Hmm. I wouldn't use that as my home radio on 5 watts 100% of the time. It'll, it, it'll probably be fine. I'm running a decent antenna at home to not uh, um, for matching and stuff like that. But I, I should, the general rule of thumb is 50% of rated power on finals, etc. Some are harder, so Barrett's, etc., that are designed to run digital voice because that it, while we hear the voice, it's going as a digital signal is designed with a higher, higher duty cycle, things like that. Um, okay, keep me with questions or anything that, or scenarios, etc. because I understand I've just shown you guys something new and I don't want to keep playing with it. Uh, I want you to have a bit of a play at home for whether it's five minutes or it becomes your favourite mode forever and ever. What I tend to do is check PSK Reporter to see what stations are on JS8. And if I see a number on 40, I'll go to 40. Um, generally, um, uh, like I, I, I can work happily an actual conversation with West Coast um, US most afternoons and evenings on 40. 80, oh, 40 is too good uh, at night, uh, I find, for JS8 because I miss anyone who's within that 300K, 400K Melbourne sort of range. Um, so I, a lot of the VK guys are now using 80 as pretty much standard uh, for during the night. Skip. And we, it, that, 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 that's replicated through SOTA in the last couple of years. We've had to actually drop to 80 to work people who we would comfortably work on, on 40 in the past. Um, and so Pete's saying good, good, good night everyone and uh, no doubt will appear in his video the, in the next couple of days because so, I told him to get his camera ready so he had some content for his channel, much like I'm using mine. As long as we... There... There we go. So, um, uh, yeah, so uh, in, in the past you used to have to use, um, so in, in the earlier beta versions you used to have to use um, CW-like um, uh, indications such as BK, etc. to say I'm now passing it back to you. But to save frames, because God forbid you actually had to send another 15 second frame just to save BK, that's why Jordan introduced that EOM indicator which you can set to whatever you want. All of these colours are actually um, customisable too. So there's some guys in the US, or sorry, not just the US, there's people everywhere that have um, different vision ability. So you can change the, um, change the contrast colours, you can change the indicators to red, etc. Um, oh, there we go. So. I think I just sent over the top of him anyway. Oh, he's going. To, yeah, he's going to leave his station on if we miss it. Well, it's the EOM indicator. Unless you're like me and go, oh, one more thing. After I've already hit send, then we just mush each other and we go again. So is that what's happened there? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So it's tried to fill in the gap there that I buggered up. Um, uh, so just an indicator on band activity, like people, 
Tonight's an unusual night on 80. There's so many stations there because I asked them to be. Um, uh, I said I was giving a presentation tonight, so they fired up on 80. Normally they'd be on 40. There's, a groups, there's two, two groups IOs. If you've never been on a groups IO, it's what our mailing list has just moved to. There's an all-in-the-world user of JS8, and then there's a VKZL one where we sort of have mini sprints and who can contact who and hey I'm switching to uh, I'm currently touring regional VK6 I'm going to be using JS8 love to stay in contact with you guys blah 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 sort of stuff um, which has about 30 to 40 members on it um, that are sporadic um, yes uh, it's only it's only up to version 1.01 so it's just after a general release. It was in beta for a long time and it actually was um, a new one being issued every two weeks because um, Jordan was finding bugs, adding features, stuff like that. So what I'll do now is while, since Pete said that he's just gonna leave his on auto, I'm just gonna send, as I said, the automatic grid, which I've just said the command grid and it's pulled um, uh, the grid that I'd programmed before, QF44NP. At your leisure, go to APRS.IS, search my call sign, VK1MIC, and I think there should be a dash 15 uh, appearing on there now, and that'll be us uh, appearing on um, APRS. Uh, every, uh, so every bit of software, yeah. every receiving station, If it's connected to the internet, oh, which see, I'm not actually on the internet, so I never tick it. Tick box. Enable spotting to reporting networks such as PSA, PSK Reporter, APRS, IS, etc. Well, if you tick that box, and whether you're at your station or not, you hear it, you hear it, Pete hears it, and whoever gets the internet first puts my station up. So every station who receives on any HF, VHF, UHF, or up into SHF. So it does all the leave all that messy, messy decoding stuff to the software. You don't actually have to see it. Um, Can you no, not yet. Oh, however, hmm. So, in the US, they have the APRS to SMS gateway. Wade sends over RF a message to Tate on 0412345678. Mate, running late, pick us up at Mount Janini another, uh, another two hours. They have a system, they have a little server that does that. It does the RF, IP, RF to out to his phone. And they also have, we, anyone in the world can also use RF to very short email to do the same thing. That will work on this. So, hmm, how would you do it? I think it's very close to being possible, but not at the moment. <laughs> um, I, and I think it's only because no one's actually sat down and used that as the mode use that as the, as the desired outcome. And Jordan would probably go, yeah, just do this. And he's very receptive. Um, I messaged him about 10 times on Facebook today. Um, uh, what else have I missed? Oh, as a side note on that APRS to SMS, I'm attempting to be VK's host point for that. Just as we we're about to go live, the guy who runs the endpoint in the US, his servers got attacked by a foreign country. Um, so, uh, I unplugged from my network. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, while we've been playing on 80 tonight, there are suggested frequencies right the way up to six across the world and locally in Australia we've just picked this band if you wanted to have a play. So much like 2 metre SSB, 2 metre whisper etc, it's just another digital mode on 2 metres and above. Like, and pick anywhere in a digital segment and any legal band and as long as there's someone on the other end to receive it, fill your boots. I know there's some guys playing with it on 23 centimetres down in Western Victoria. I've seen, I've seen them doing that as well and they're getting about 100 k's or something on 5 watts. Which is, you know, Andrew gets further than that on his 2.5 up on a summit. So. Hmm. Questions, queries, doubtful points, anything I've missed, anything I've... I, I did go quite fast tonight, so if I shut up now and we can have a bit of a stretch, but come over, have a look at the station, ask some questions, 
it's, um, it all fits in my backpack, it's my normal soda kit, so, um, or if you're super bored and want to see what that antenna looks like, we can go outside and have a look at that as well. Um, don't forget to fill out the members book tonight, sign that. What's the minimum? Look, because I'm running a hotspot and a graphical desktop and getting it to do stuff, I like the 3B. Um, it's the same form factor as the 2 if you had cases already. So your outlay in Australia is about 56 bucks at the moment um, delivered naked. So no case, no SD, no nothing like that. Although these guys at... I keep wanting to call it it's just the space. What do you call it, Ben? Void. Yeah, make hat void. Um, the uh, hack and um, um, make uh, space uh, in North Canberra. Uh, they might do a group buy eventually or something like that, and might be able to push that price down. I was going to say there's not a lot. It's not J Car where they're charging eighty five dollars to get one off the shelf. Uh, <laughs> yeah, core core electronics is is the primary one. Yep. Cool. I'll shut up. Right, well, you're joining me, thank you, Wade. Thank you. Oh.